And here we go. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when we live in our dream. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Creating Geeks podcast. As you've probably guessed, this uh, week, evening episode, um, we're going to be discussing Lego time and warp. Time Warp and the Lego movies back in particular. To the time warp. Sorry. <laughs> um, in case you hear him, Sarah and I are joined by our son, Jake, tonight. He just Hi, didn't, Jake. He just didn't he want to sleep, so he's here. Um, he's so cuddly. And a little bit of housekeeping at the beginning, as usual. Um you can find me at patreon.com slash the Chippa for all these podcasts. Also on YouTube at the Chippa Made This. Um, and we're producing the Chipman Brothers Tangent with my brother Movie Bob, the Talkbuster podcast, and shooting the SH apostrophe or SH asterisk, asterisk T with Chippa. Um, and thank you guys so far for uh, all the fans and everybody that listens. So without further ado, we'll get into Lego. I guess I'll start. Sure. Sure. War. I the hell not. So Lego. Yourself up. Go for it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Lego. <laughs> I feel like very obnoxious tonight. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Uh, milk me. Milk me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing on this one. Are you ready? <laughs> yep. All right. Lego is a line of plastic construction toys that are manufactured by the Lego Group a privately held company based in Billund, Denmark. The company's flagship product, Lego, consists of colorful interlocking plastic bricks accompanying an array of gears, figurines called minifigures, and various other parts. Lego pieces can be assembled and connected in many ways to construct objects, including vehicles, buildings, and working robots. Anything constructed can then be taken apart again, and the pieces used to make other objects, unless, you know, you use the craggle. The Lego group began in the workshop of Ole Kirk Christensen. Um, from, uh, he was born in 19 1891 and died in 1958. A carpenter from Billund, Denmark, who began making wooden toys in 1932. Uh, in 1934, his company came to be called Lego, derived from the f Danish phrase Legot, which means play well. In 1947, Lego expanded to begin producing plastic toys. In 1949, Lego began producing, among other new products, an early version of the now familiar interlocking bricks, calling uh, calling them automatic binding bricks. These bricks were based on the kid, Kitty Craft self-locking bricks, which had been patented in the United Kingdom in 1939 and released in 1947. Lego had received a sample of the Kitty Craft bricks from the supplier of an injection molding machine that it purchased. The bricks originally manufactured from cellulose acetate were a development of the traditional stackable wooden blocks of time. Of the time. The Lego group's motto is Det Bedsti er ik forgot, which means roughly only the best is the best. More literally, the best is never too good. This motto, which is still used today, was created by Christensen to encourage his employees never to skimp on quality, a value he believed in strongly. By 1951, plastic toys accounted for half of the Lego company's output, even though the Danish trade magazine Lego Toys Tinded Toy Times visited the Lego factory in Billund in the early 1950s, felt that plastic would never be able to replace traditional wooden toys. Although a common sentiment, Lego toys seem to have become a significant exception to the dislike of plastic in children's toys, due in part to the high standards set by Ole Kirk. By 1954, Christensen's son, Godfried had become the junior managing director of the Lego Group. It was his con conversation with an overseer's buyer that led to the idea of a toy system. Godfrey saw the immense portal potential in Lego bricks to become a system for creative play, but the bricks still had some problems from a technical standpoint. Their locking ability was limited, and they were not versatile. In 1958, the modern brick design was developed. It took five years to find the right material for it. ABS Act. Your scientist, you Acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. Thank you. Polymer. Polymer. The modern Lego brick design was patented on 28 January 1958. The Lego Group's Duplo product line was introduced in 1969 and is a range of simple blocks whose lengths measure twice in width, height, and depth of standard Lego blocks and are aimed towards younger children. In 1978, Lego produced the first minifigures, which have since become a staple in most sets. 
In May 2011, Space Shuttle Endeavor Missions STS-134 brought 13 LEGO kits to the International Space Station, where astronauts built models to see how they would react in microgravity as part of the LEGO Bricks in Space program. In May 2013, the largest model ever created was displayed in New York City and was made of over 5 million bricks, a one-to-one scale model of the X-Wing fighter. Other records include a 112-foot tower and a 4-kilometer, 2.5-mile railway. As of July 2015, 600 billion Lego parts have been produced. In February 2015, Lego replaced Ferrari as the world's most powerful brand. Lego pieces of all varieties constitute a universal system. Despite variation in design and the purpose of individual pieces over the years, each piece remains compatible in some way with existing pieces. Lego bricks from 1958 still interlock with those made in current times. And Lego sets for young children are compatible with those made for teenagers. Six bricks of 2 by 4 studs can be combined with in 915,103,765 ways. That's amazing. Each Lego piece must be manufactured to an exacting degree of precision. With When two pieces are engaged, logic, are engaged, they must fit firmly yet be easily disassembled. The machines that manufacture Lego bricks have tolerances as small as 10 micrometers. That's insane. Whatever all that science means. Primary concept and development work takes place at the Billund headquarters, where the company employs approximately 120 designers. The company also has smaller design offices in the UK, Spain, Germany, and Japan, which are tasked with developing products aimed specifically at these markets. The average development period for a new product is around 12 months, split into three stages. The first stage is to identify market trends and developments, including contact by the designers directly with the market. Some are stationed in toy shops close to holidays, while others interview children. The second stage is the design and development of the product based upon the results of the first stage. As of September 2008, the design teams used 3D modeling software to generate CAD drawings from initial design sketches. The designs are then prototyped using in-house stereolithography machines. These prototypes are presented to the entire project team for comment and for testing by parents and children during the validation process. Designs may then be altered in accordance with the results from the focus groups. Virtual models of completed LEGO products are built concurrently with the writing of the user instructions. Completed CAD models are also used in the wider organization for marketing and unpackaging. LEGO Digital Designer is an official piece of LEGO software for Mac, OS X, and Windows, which allows users to create their own digital LEGO designs. The program once allowed customers to order their custom designs with a service to ship physical models from Digital Designer to its consumers. Their service ended in 2012. The 1963 LEGO pieces have been, or since 1963, LEGO pieces have been manufactured from a strong, resilient plastic known as acrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, ABS. As of September 2008, LEGO engineers used the NXCAD KMKCAE PLM software suit to model the elements. The software allows the parts to be optimized by way of mold flow and stress analysts. Prototype molds are sometimes built before the design is committed to mass production. The ABS plastic is heated to 232 232 degrees Celsius, or 450 Fahrenheit, until it reaches a dough-like consistency. It is then injected into the molds at pressures between 25 and 150 tones. Tons, that's the British spelling. And takes approximately 15 seconds to cool. The molds are permitted a tolerance of up to 20 micrometers to ensure the bricks remain connected. Human inspectors check the output of the molds to eliminate significant variations in color or thickness. According to the LEGO group, about 18 bricks out of every million fail to meet standard requirements. The LEGO factories recycle all but 1% of their plastic waste from the manufacturing process. If the plastic cannot be reused in LEGO bricks, it is processed and sold on to industries that make use of it, or they can't make use of it. LEGO has imposed 230, 2030 deadline, a 2030 deadline to find a more eco-friendly alternative to the ABS plastic it currently uses in its bricks. Manufacturing of LEGO bricks occurs at several locations around the world. Molding is done in Billund, Denmark, Nyazaga, Hungary, Monterey, Mexico, and most recently in Jiaxing, China. Brick decorations and packaging are done in plants in Denmark, Hungary, Mexico, and Klando in the Czech Republic. 
The Lego Group estimates that in five decades it has produced 400 billion Lego bricks. Annual production of Lego bricks averages approximately 36 billion, or about 1,140 elements per second. According to an article in Business Week in 2006, Lego could be considered the world's number one tire manufacturer. <laughs> the factory produces about 306 million small rubber tires a year. The claim was reiterated in 2012. Yikes. 2000, hey, go back. Technical difficulties. In 2012, the BBC's more or less radio program asked the Open University Engineering Department to determine how many Lego bricks stacked one on top of the other it would take for the weight to destroy the bottom brick. Using a hydraulic testing machine, the engineering department determined that the average maximum force a 2x2 two two Lego brick can stand is 4,240 tons since the average... Newtons. newtons. 2,240 newtons. Newtons. Since an average 2x2 two two Lego bricks has a mass of 1.152 grams, or 0. 0.0406 ounces, according to their calculations, it would take a stack of 375,000 bricks to cause the bottom brick to collapse, which represents a stack... 3,591 meters, or 11,781 feet in height. Private tests have shown several thousand assembly-disassembly cycles before the bricks begin to wear out, although LEGO tests show fewer cycles. In 2018, LEGO announced that it will be using a bio-derived polyethylene to make its botanical, um, yeah, botanical elements, parts such as leaves, bushes, and trees. So things that don't have to carry as much weight. That's interesting. Since the 1950s, the Lego Group has released thousands of sets with a variety of themes, including space, robots, pirates, trains, Vikings, castles, dinosaurs, undersea exploration, and the Wild West. Some of the classic themes that continue to the present day include Lego City, a line of sets depicting city life introduced in 1973, and Lego Technic, a line aimed at emulating complex machinery introduced in 1977. Over the years, Lego has licensed... Themes from numerous cartoon and film franchises, and even some from video games. These include Batman, Indiana Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean, Yar, Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Minecraft. Although some of the licensed themes, Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, and Lego Indiana Jones, had highly successful sales, Lego has expressed a desire to rely more upon their own characters and classic themes and less upon licensed themes as related to movie releases. They forgot all the Disney ones. <laughs> For the 2012 Summer Olympics in London, LEGO released a special LEGO minifigure series. And for the 2016 Summer Olympics and 2016 Summer Paralympics in Rio, LEGO released a kit with the Olympic and Paralympic mascots, Vinicius, Vinicius and Tom. <laughs> One of the largest LEGO sets commercially produced was a minifig scaled edition of the Star Wars Millennium Falcon, designed by Je Jens Kronvold Fredriksen. It was released in 2007 and contained... 5,195 pieces. It was surpassed by a 5,922 piece Taj Mahal. A redesigned Millennium Falcon recently retook the top spot in 2017 with 7,541 pieces. So, um, speaking of the Millennium Falcon, and I think this is before they came out with the big version in 2007, um, I went on vacation with my family down to Florida and went to downtown Disney, and they had the classic giant, a uh, big Millennium Falcon set, and I actually liked it so much I had it shipped back to me from Florida, and you and I built it. Remember when I came home? Yes. So what's um what's what's your experience with Lego and your favorite sets you can remember from growing up or current? Um, I remember my sister got a big box for Christmas. I was probably a baby. I may not even been born. But I've seen pictures of it, and it's got, like, all the different colors, you know, and they're sorted by colors just to, you know, build your own big thing. And I feel like it dwindled over the years down to a little, like, shoebox. And this thing was huge. Which, that's about what I remembered. It was just kind of like we built our own stuff. I didn't really get into Legos till I was with you. Um, and I don't know. I think it was probably that Millennium Falcon set because we had just started. We had just gotten back together. Um I guess my favorite set would be the Disney castle, my my very big, huge castle, thanks to you and Bob for getting that for me. And I guess all my, my Disney castles that I've collected, I know there's a few I don't have, but I probably won't get. Um, And then the open pop-up book thing that I have to build still. Yeah. I think are my favorite ones. And I like the ship in the bottle, which we also have to do. Yes. My, uh, my favorite sets from my childhood, I had... Um... Well, Bob and I had Duplo, and I used to use Duplo to make, you know, like, I guess they'd be like Castlevania-type, like, walking things looked like castle ruins. 
mm-hmm. the characters would walk on. But then, you know, I had various sets throughout my childhood that I used to animate, um, and I really enjoyed that. I had a really cool, large, dark castle that was really cool and a couple of pirate ships. But my current sets that are my favorite that I've built so far are the Ghostbusters Firehouse, which you and I did together. Um, that was and, annoying. Yeah, it was hard. And um, I really liked the uh, um, the modular movie theater. That was the cool. palace. Those two were, were a pain in the ass. Tense. Like, and I like the ones that take a while to do. But even those two towards the end house is like enough, done, uncle. <laughs> so yeah, so that brings us um to the the point I wanted to get to by by doing the history of Lego. I mean, I, I Lego's always been a part of my life, and I'm loving being able to share them with my kids, but. My fondest recent time Lego memory was uh, the release of the Lego movie, which came out on my 30th birthday, which I think is really cool. We got a bunch of people, and I brought my giant um, Lego yellow head. Lego head and had them fill it up with popcorn for the movie in the theater obliged, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, so we'll get into the uh, Lego movie and um, the other uh, more recent in-theater Lego films that have come out. And um, For those of you that are listening to this wanting to hear something new, um, we saw with my brother uh, Movie Bob uh, last week. We're recording this on the 13th of uh, February. And last week, um, at a pre screening in Boston, we got to see the Lego Movie 2. So we'll talk about that at the end as well. So I'll start um, with the Lego Movie, which was released in 2014. So the Lego Movie is a 2014 3D computer animated adventure comedy film written and directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller from a story by Lord Miller and Dan and Kevin Hagerman. And if you believe the uh, names Phil Lord and Christopher Miller are familiar when you're hearing this, they're also the guys that are responsible for pulling off Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, which I absolutely love. They made the uh, 221 Jump Street films, which shouldn't have worked and worked fantastically. And more recently were the producers of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which could very well be the best animated film I've ever seen and one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um... The movie was based on the Lego line of construction toys. The story focuses on an ordinary Lego minifigure who finds himself helping a resistance stop a tyrannical businessman from gluing everything in with the Lego world into his vision of perfection. Chris Pratt, Will Ferrell, Elizabeth Banks, Will Arnett, Nick Offerman, Allison Brie, Charlie Day, Liam Neeson, and Morgan Freeman provide their voices for the film's main characters. The first film produced by Warner Brothers Animation Group, the or Lego- WAG. Yep. The Lego movie was released on February 7th, 2014 by Warner Brothers Pictures. It became a critical and commercial success, grossing $469 million worldwide against a $60 million budget and receiving praise for its visual style, humor, voice acting, and heartwarming message. The film won the BAFTA Award for Best Animated Film, the Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Animated Feature, and the Saturn Award for Best Animated Film. It was also nominated for a Golden Globe Award at for Best... Animated film. Animated film. Um, it should be noted, all right, animated f- feature film and received an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song for Everything, Everything is, is Awesome. But it would not be nominated for an Academy Award for animation because of the five-second real people scene at the end. Stupid old Right, which means that Lego Movie 2 probably couldn't get a nomination either. Stupid Oscars, F you. All right, so um, get into uh, the... Sorry. um. Yeah, I know. Actually, I thought that was funny, uh... The directors actually made Lego Oscars for themselves and gave them to each other uh, in response for that. Um, so, so quickly run through the plot, and you know, we, we talked about how the movie is praised for its visual style. They did this in a computer, but they dropped the keyframes so the characters look like they were animated by a kid in his house, kind of the animation I used to do. And so, even though this is done in a computer, they look and reflect and everything like real Lego pieces, like fingerprints. Yeah, and, and it's just fantastic. So the story is in the Lego universe, populated by anthropomorphic minifigures. The evil Lord Business finds a super weapon called the Craggle, which, spoiler alert, is just crazy glue. The wizard Vitruvius attempts, yeah, it's Vitruvius, attempts to stop him, but is blinded by Business's robots. Before Business leaves with the weapon, Vitruvius prophesizes that someone called the Special will find the Piece of Resistance, a brick capable of stocking, stopping the Craggle. Eight and a half years later, in the city of Bricksburg, ordinary construction worker Emmett Burkowski, I didn't know he had the last name, notices a mysterious woman searching for something at his construction site. When he investigates, Emmett falls into a hole and finds the piece of resistance. Um, compelled to touch it, Emmett experiences vivid visions and passes out. 
He awakens with a piece of resistance attached to his back in custody of good cop, bad cop, Lord Business's lieutenant. The woman, who introduces herself as Wild Style, rescues Emmett, believing him to be the special, and takes him to meet Vitruvius in the Old West. Emmett learns Wild Style and Vitruvius are master builders, people capable of building anything from their imagination without the need of instructions, who oppose business. And I really like how they visualize that. They visualize them looking out into the world and the pieces pull out and look like a Lego instruction manual with the number of the Lego piece. I really like that. Wildstyle explains that business wants to use the craggle, a tube of crazy glue with a weathered label, to freeze the world into perfection. Though disappointed to find Emmett is not a master builder, Wildstyle and Vitruvius are convinced of his potential when he recalls visions of a seemingly human deity referred to as the man upstairs. And any adult in the audience can probably see where this is going, but um, it's still wonderful. So, so go ahead. Emmett, Wildstyle, and Vitruvius evade bad cops' forces with the aid of Batman, Wildstyle's boyfriend. They He's go to, very, very serious boyfriend. They go to the hidden realm of realm of Cloud Cuckoo Land to attend a council of master builders, all of whom are unimpressed with Emmett and refuse to fight business. Bad cops, cops forces invade Cloud Cuckoo Land, having placed a tracking device on Emmett and capture everyone except Emmett's Wildstyle, Batman, Vitruvius, a small group of other master builders. And Cloud Cuckoo Land is destroyed. Emmett devises plan to infiltrate Business's tower and disarm the Kraggle with the help from Princess Unikitty, a unicorn cat, and the pirate Metalbeard. The plan goes well at first, but the group ends up captured and imprisoned in the think tank, where all master builders are forced to make instructions. Vestruvius uh, resists, Wait. but is decapitated by Business, who sets a self-destruct protocol and leaves everyone to die, including Bad Cop. As he dies, Vitruvius reveals he made up the prophecy. He soon reappears to Emmett as a ghost, being hung on a string and wiggled around, which I thought was brilliant, and reveals self-belief is what makes one the special. Strapped to the self-destruct mechanism's battery, Emmett jumps into the abyss outside the tower and severs the connection, saving his friends. Inspired by Emmett's sacrifice, Wildstyle rallies the Lego people across the universe to build machines and weapons to fight against Lord Business's army of micromanagers. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bad Cop allow, uh, allies himself with the Master Builders. Emmett finds himself in the human world as Lego minifigures as a Lego minifigure and able to move. The events of the story are being played out by a boy named Finn on his father's expansive Lego set. In their basement, his father, the man upstairs, comes home from work and is horrified to see his son ruining his ideal setup by combining different play sets and ignoring the instructions. And immediately proceeds to undo Finn's changes and permanently glue the pieces together. Realizing the danger his friends are in, Emmett wills himself to move and gains Finn's attention. I must say that that would be me. That was wonder. It, 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 it's it, it's so such a cool ugly. ending to a movie, and as Sarah mentioned, the reason why it wasn't able to get the animated categories nomination. Finn returns Emmett and the piece of resistance to the set where Emmett now possesses the powers of a master builder and confronts business in Bricksburg. Meanwhile, Finn's father looks at his son's creations and realizes Finn had based the villainous Lord Business on him and his perfectionism. Though a speech Emmett gives business, uh, through a speech Emmett gives business, Finn's father comes to his senses and apologizes to his son, and the two unglue the constructions um, with mineral spirits, which plays out as business <clears throat> having a change of heart and freeing his victims. Emmett is hailed as a hero and begins a romantic relationship with Mild Wildstyle with Batman's blessing. Finn's father then allows Finn's younger sister Bianca to join them in playing with his Lego sets, as well resulting in aliens from the planet Duplon beaming down to the Lego world and announcing their plans to destroy everything. Which leaves us in suspense until we talk about the Lego movie too. I do have to this. say, I, you, were, you mentioned how the crack goes the crazy glue. Don't forget the knife of exact zero. Yes, the it's, knife of exact zero, or the blade of exact zero. zero. The, um, Band, the... Bandaid. Yeah, the, uh, the shroud, the cloak of Bandaid. It really hurts when you rip it off. Um, what are the other ones? That's all I can remember. Um, exact zero knife and the Band-Aid. No, I thought, wasn't there, uh... The um the Polish remover of Nail. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's another great one. So um, what did you think of the Lego Movie, Sarah? 
I loved it. I thought it was a blast. It, it's that was so much fun. It's incredibly. Didn't cr- we use everything as awesome in our wedding? Yes, we did. Sad that I don't remember that. So, um, the cool thing with the Lego Movie, I think the best thing is that this never should have been a movie that worked. It opened up a whole world of. We still have how many sets from Lego Movie right, One in the, left, right. the it, playroom to build. It by never. The way. Sh- it never should have been a movie that worked, and the movie ends up being a story about anti-capitalism and consumerism that's basically telling you to buy more products. It's kind of a genius double standard. I believe Phil Lord and Chris Miller are absolute geniuses, and this movie is one of my favorites of all time. Like I said, I feel like I would be the father in this, not wanting the kid to destroy, because I'm very much a perfectionist and don't touch my shit. So I can just see myself be like, no, don't touch. And I think but I know I should. Th- this was being made, um, you know, right at the time of Chris Pratt's rise to um, everybody loving him. So it was kind of that same year as Guardians of the Galaxy and um, Jurassic World and everything else. So. You know, it was great to hear him um, in this lead role, and he's so perfect with the innocence of this and I character. Love the, was it the special features we were watching that he was doing the voice of Emmett that were hysterical? Yeah, so I was and actually there was something that he did. I, with the I was actually going to mention it. Oh. So he's he so Chris Pratt does his voice, and in the special features they have Emmett going through the making of the movie, and he introduces himself as if he's an actor, and he goes, "I and I was so 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 happy that they allowed the." Great actor Chris Pine, who played Captain Kirk, to do my voice, Captain and then you hear someone go, "No, no, Chris, that's a different Chris. Chris Pine is Captain Kirk. Captain America is Chris Evans." Okay, that's the joke. Too the three Chris's. Chris's. So, Other and you, you hear someone whisper in his ear. You hear someone whisper in his ear. Who the hell is Chris Pratt? <laughs> and it's just genius. Um, also, I really like how Wild Style is like the like um like uh gothy teenage girl like edgelord kind of character and realizes you know that was like a name yeah like the the like late 90s like angry at everything on the internet the word is edgelord oh they call it um anyway so yeah um so with that um we're through the lego movie and we've moved on into if you think they could do this once they decided they're going to do it again with lego batman in 2017 so the lego batman movie and again batman was a main character in the lego movie um the Lego Batman movie is a 2017 computer animated superhero comedy film produced by the Warner Animation Group and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. It was directed by Chris McKay, who is one of the guys from uh, Robot Chicken, um, and written by Seth Graham Smith, Chris McKenna, Eric Summers, Jared Stern, and John Whittington, and produced by Dan Lin, Roy Lee, Phil Lord, and Chris Miller. So there they are. Based on the Lego Batman toy line. The film is an international co-production of the United States, Australia, and Denmark, and the first spin-off installment of the Lego Movies franchise. The story centers on the DC Comics character Batman as he attempts to overcome his greatest fear in order to stop the Joker's latest plan. The film features Will Arnett reprising his role from the, Le- role from the Lego Movie as Batman and the fil- for the film alongside Zach Galifianakis, who is one of the best... Um, takes on the Joker I've heard in a while. Michael Sarah, Rosario Dawson, and Rafe Fiennes. Alright. Lego Batman movie had its premiere in Dublin Island on January 29th, 19, uh, 2017. <laughs> wow. And was released in the United States on February 10th, 2017. Internationally, the film was released in Real D 3D. Uh, 3D, Real D 3D, Colby, Dolby Cinema, IMAX, and IMAX 3D, whatever all that is. The film received positive reviews with critics praising an animation, voice acting, soundtrack, visual style, and humor, and was also commercially successful, having grossed $312 million worldwide against a budget of $80 million. A sequel is in development. So the story as it goes, within the DC superhero dimension in the Lego universe, so again, they're going with the, this is somebody playing with these toys, possibly, but not the same kid playing with his toys in the first one since Batman was just a figure in that universe. Batman continues to protect Gotham City and fight crime. During his latest mission to stop the Joker from destroying the city, he hurts his feelings by telling him he is not as important in his life as he thinks he is, leading Joker to seek an ultimate revenge on him. The following day, Batman's alter ego, Bruce Wayne, attends the city's Winter Gala, which is celebrating both the retirement of Commissioner Gordon and the ascension of his daughter, Barbara, as the city's new police commissioner, only to be infuriated by Barbara's plan to restructure the police to function without the need of Batman. Um, Without warning, Joker crashes the party with the city's other villains, 
all of whom surrender with the exception of Harley Quinn, who disappears during the confusion. Suspecting his arch-rival is up to something, Batman plots to steal Superman's Phantom Zone projector, a device that can banish anyone to the Phantom Zone, which houses some of the most dangerous villains in the LEGO universe, multiverse. Just as he plans to... Just as he plans his heist of the device, Alfred intervenes and advises him to take care of Dick Grayson, whom Bruce unwittingly adopted as his ward during the gala. Oh, I remember that character. Reluctantly agreeing to do so, Batman fosters Dick as Robin, whereupon the pair successfully recover the projector from the Fortress of Solitude, break into Arkham Asylum, and send Joker to the Phantom Zone. Suspecting that the Joker wanted to be there, be sent there, Barbara locks up Batman and Robin for their reckless actions. <laughs> It's it's really really well done. I love how when they get to the um, Fortress of Solitude, Superman has all the other superheroes there, and Batman like is pretending not to be jealous of the fact that he's having a giant party without him. While the projector is being seized as evidence, Harley steals it back as part of Joker's plan and frees him, allowing him to return to Gotham with all the villains he had recruited in the Phantom Zone, including King Kong, the Gremlins, the Wicked Witch of the West, and her flying monkeys a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Velociraptor, presumably from Jurassic Park, Lord Voldemort, Sauron from Lord of the Rings, the Jaws Shark, the Daleks, Lord Vampire, the Evil Mummy, Swamp Creature, Medusa, Agent Smith and his clones, Skeleton Warriors, General Zod and the Kraken. Realizing that the city does not need him, or does need him, Barbara releases Batman and Robin and teams up with them and Alfred to stop the Joker. Although Batman finds himself able to trust and rely on his new team upon reaching Wayne Island, he chooses to send them away rather than losing them like his parents. Upon facing him alone, Joker believes that Batman is incapable of changing and zaps him into the Phantom Zone before stealing the Batcave stash of confiscated bombs. Arriving in the Phantom Zone, Batman witnesses the harm his selfishness has caused to everyone and slowly accepts his greatest fear, making a deal with the zone's gatekeeper, Phyllis, a talking Lego brick, to be allowed back to Gotham in order to retrieve the zone's escaped prisoners. Batman arrives in time to save his teammates, apologizing to them for his actions and requesting their help to stop Joker. Realizing that Joker plans to use... Plans to use the explosives he took to destroy the city's energy facility, thus causing the city to come apart and be destroyed. Batman turns Barbara into Batgirl before he, is, before he, his team, and Gotham City's other villains, who felt neglected by Joker, managed to successfully send the escaped villains back to the Phantom Zone. However, the group failed to stop Joker's bombs going off as the explosion begins to tear the city apart at the plates beneath it. Knowing this was his fault. Batman reluctantly convinces Joker that he is the true reason for being the hero he is before they, their friends and allies, and the city's inhabitants chain link themselves together and pull the plates back together, saving the city. With the city saved, Batman prepares to be taken back into the Phantom Zone to fulfill his bargain, only to be rejected by Phyllis, who chooses to let him remain after seeing how much he had changed in order to save everyone. Afterwards, Batman allows excuse me, allows Joker and the rest of his rogues to temporarily escape with the confidence that whenever they return, there will be no match for Batman and his family. Was Phyllis mentioned previously? Correct. Okay. Didn't Phyllis it. is a talking Lego brick. Uh, so what did you think of the Lego Batman movie? I liked it. I, until we started reading that, I didn't really remember it. I think I only saw it the one time. But yeah, I liked it. It was fun. It was another birthday outing of mine. Uh, the thing that I love the most about the Lego Batman movie is that... Was it? Yeah, is that while... Um, well, you, you know, think the Lego thing being done a second time would kind of outweigh its, uh, out, outlive its welcome. They managed to make a really, really great Batman movie that's really, really self-referential and jokey, but also paying a lot of love and tribute to Batman. Um, and also be a damn good Batman movie and also just happen to be made out of Lego and have a lot of Lego jokes. So I, I loved the Lego Batman movie. One of my favorite gags in the movie is when they go, um, and Alfred gives him, you know, crap for all the different, like, phases he's gone through. And they go all the way back to the Adam West one, all the way through the nipple-clad Batman from the yes. Joel Schumacher movies, all the way to now. To which Batman's reaction is, wow, I have aged fantastically. I and, like the the part with the microwave, and he's microwaving his lobster thermidor. Oh, yeah, lo lobster thermidor, my favorite! Um, so, if you haven't seen the Lego Batman movie, it's absolutely fantastic. What would you say these Lego movies are good for? You know, like, eight, eight or older? I mean, Ava's seen them. Yeah. She's three. 
Um, maybe like five. Yeah, okay, fair. So that brings us to um, a movie that I'm just going to come right out and say that I really liked. Um, I mean, and I, how old are kids that are playing Minecraft? No that's true. That. But but I'm, I'm going to say before we even get into this next one, this next one, I really liked it, and I think it unnecessarily gets a lot of crap. You know, out of all of them, it doesn't quite work quite as well as the other two, but but I loved it, so let, let's talk about it a little bit. So, the Lego Ninjago movie is a 2017 3D computer animated martial arts adventure comedy film based on the toy line of the same name. Directed by Charlie Bean, Paul Fisher, and Bob Logan, from a screenplay by Logan Fisher and William Wheeler, Tom Wheeler, Jared Stern, and John Whittington. It is the first theatrical film to be based on an original Lego property, the third installment of the Lego movie franchise, as well as its second spinoff. Starring the voices of Dave Franco, Justin Thoreau, Fred Armisen, Abby Jacobson, Olivia Munn, Kumail Najani, Michael Pena, Zach Woods, and Jackie Chan. The film focuses on Lloyd Garmadon. The Lloyd. Because it's spelled Lloyd. A teenage ninja as he attempts to accept the truth about his villainous father with a new, while a new threat emerges to endanger his homeland. It is an international co-production of the United States and Denmark. Produced by Warner Animation Group, Rat Pack Entertainment, Lego System AS, Dan Lin's Lin Pictures, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller's Lord Miller Productions, and Roy Lee's Vertigo Entertainment. It was released in the United States on September 22, 2017 uh, in 3D, 2D, and Dolby Cinema by Warner Brothers Pictures. It received mixed reviews from critics for its humor and gross uh, $123.1 million against a $70 million budget. The film's animation was provided by Animal Logic. A young boy visits an old relic shop where he meets the mysterious elderly owner, Mr. Lou, who begins to tell him the story of Ninjago, a city within the Lego universe which is frequently terrorized by the evil Lord Garmadon, who is the father of teenager Lloyd Garmadon, an ex-husband of Masako, a.k.a. Coco. Ninjago despises Lloyd just for being Lord Garmadon's son, thus putting Lloyd under emotional stress. Unbeknownst to them, Loy is part of the secret ninja force consisting of Naya, Zane, Jay, Cole, Kai, and their master named Wu, who also stop, um, who always stop Garmadon from taking over Ninjago City by fighting with mechs. Another, after another fight, Garmadon's army's tech division shows up, shows him a new mech. All right. All right. Meanwhile, Lloyd and his friends see the return of Master Wu back from a long trip he took. Master Wu tells them they aren't real ninja if they only use mechs to fight and discuss with Lloyd that his element is green. Wu mentions an ultimate weapon during their talk, giving Lloyd the hope of defending Gramadon once and for all, despite being forbidden to use the weapon. The next day, Gramadon attacks Ninjago City with his giant mech and defeats Lloyd. As Gramadon declares his rule over Ninjago, Lloyd returns with the ultimate weapon and fires it, only to reveal it's a laser pointer that distract attracts a live-action cat named Meowthra, Garmadon points the laser to make the cat destroy the other mechs before Lloyd breaks it. As Garmadon celebrates his victory, Lloyd unmasks himself and tells Garmadon that he wishes he weren't his father, leaving Garmadon confused. Lloyd meets up with his friends and Master Wu, who tells him they must use an ultimate, ultimate weapon in order to stop Meowthra from destroying Ninjago City, which they would reach by crossing the Forest of Dangers, the Canyon of Death, and the Temple of Fragile Foundations is the other side of Ninjago Island. Garmadon overhears Wu talking about the weapon, follows close behind, meets up with Wu, and fights him, only to end in, uh, end up in a cage defeat. However, Wait, go back over a minute. why? Wu is talking about the weapon, falls closely, meets up, Wu meets with Wu. I guess so. Oh, Garden, oh yeah. no. Garmadon overhears Wu talking yeah, I about the this. weapons. Falls closely behind me. Okay, Garmadon meets up with Wu. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to start that paragraph again. What? Lloyd meets up with his friends in Master Wu, who tells them they must use an ultimate, ultimate weapon in order to stop Meowthra from destroying Ninjago City, which they would reach by crossing the Forest of Dangers, the Canyon of Death, and the Temple of Fragile Foundations at the other side of Ninjago Island. Garmadon overhears Wu talking about the weapon, follows close behind, meets up with Wu and fights him, only to end up in a cage defeated. However, Wu loses his balance and falls off a bridge into a river, telling the ninja they must find inner peace before getting swept away. The ninja decide to continue on with Garmadon leading them, much to Lloyd's disappointment. 
Despite this, the two bond through their journey, while the ninja learn not, uh, to not rely solely on their mechs to fight. The group survives an encounter with Garmadon's fired generals, an antagonist, and the antagonist teaches Lloyd to throw things. They eventually crash down onto the Temple of Fragile Foundations, Garmadon's childhood home. He tells Lloyd that he wishes he'd stayed with him and his mom after deciding to conquer Ninjago, but he couldn't change, so he had to stay behind. The ninja find the ultimate ultimate weapon consisting of a set of trinkets only to have it stolen by Garmadon, who still wants to take over the city. He offers for Laloy to be his general, but Laloy rejects his offer. Angered, Garmadon locks all of them in the temple as it begins to collapse. Laloy realizes that inner peace peace and P I E C E in parentheses means for them to unleash their power within, and they successfully do using their elemental powers and escaping from the collapsing temple. As they fall off a cliff, Wu saves them with his ship, the Destiny's Bounty, and they head toward Njago. Garmadon arrives and tries to defeat Mialthra with the ultimate, ultimate weapon, but Mialthra eats Garmadon instead. Lloyd and his crew arrive and begin fighting Garmadon's army. As Lloyd approaches Mialthra, he reveals to everyone that he is the Green Ninja, and realizes that green means life and that his element of green is what connects the ninja together, and his family together. He confronts Mialthra and tells Garmadon he forgives him and that he's sorry. Garmadon cries tears of fire, which causes Mialthra to spit him out. After reconciling, Mialthra becomes the mascot of Ninjago, and Lloyd is hailed as a hero. As the story concludes, Mr. Liu informs the boy that he will start training him as a ninja at dawn, after the boy shows him great reflexes and ninja potential after listening to their story. Now, the thing that is the least um, palatable, I guess, about this sequel, even though um, I still really liked it, and I guess pissed the critics off the most, is the story is very similar. It's just a kid with dad issues, you know, dealing with the dad issues. But I, I really liked that the real world story, even though the Ninjago part of it was so jokey, with Jackie Chan as the uh, um, guy in the store and the little kid and running, running from the bullies, was very similar to the never-ending story. And I love the never ending story. Never ending story. So, so the kid coming in and running from bullies and then meeting the guy that tells him the story. And I'm a sucker for stuff like that. And I think it was really well done in this movie. So um, if if you're listening to this and you've slept on the Lego Ninjago movie, which I would say, I mean, it, it's not as good as the Lego movie or Lego Batman, but it's great. It's a lot of fun. I say, please check it out. Um, I really, really liked it. I Did liked you? it a lot. It, it's really enjoyable. I think I may have liked it better than Batman, but no, I don't remember. Interesting. I think I liked them them both about equal. So that brings us to the Lego Movie 2, the second part, in order to make this podcast relevant. Um, You want me to start on this one? Yeah. Okay. The Lego Movie 2, the second part, is a 2019 computer animated adventure comedy film produced by the Warner Animation Group and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. It is a direct sequel to the Lego movie, which came out in 2014. It is the fourth film in the franchise following the release of two spinoffs, the Lego Batman movie and Lego Ninjago. Both came out in 2017. Animal Logic, who provided the animation for all the films in the franchise, returned. All right, you're up. Uh, I'll need to get a pair of glasses on. The film is directed by Mike Mitchell with Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, writers and directors of the first film, returning as producers and writers. Animation direction is by Trisha Gum. It features Chris Pratt, Elizabeth Banks, Will Arnett, Charlie Day, Alison Brie, Nick Offerman, and Will Ferrell, reprising their roles from the previous film, along with new additions to the cast, including Tiffany Haddish, Stephanie Beatriz, and Maya Rudolph. Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. Like a radish. The Lego Movie 2, the second part, was released in the United States on February 8, 2019 in 2D, 3D, Real D 3D, Dolby Cinema, IMAX, and IMAX 3D formats. The film received positive reviews from critics who commended its humor, screenplay, animation, and voice acting. Now for the plot. In five years since the events of the first film, Finn's younger sister Bianca has started taking some of his Lego creations and other toys from the sets in the basement, along with her own set of Duplo bricks to play with her own room. Play within her own room. Metaphorically, in the Lego universe, the Duplo invaders have turned Bricksburg into a post-apocalyptic wasteland named Apocalypseburg and continue to invade pro- periodically. The ordeal has made most of Apocalypseburg citizens hardened, but Emmett remains upbeat, wanting to move into a dream home with Lucy, who is wild style. However, Emmett is troubled by dreams of a pending Armageddon. Armageddon. 
So um, th- that's the first thing I'll note before I start reading. Um, this one is way less um, subtle with the metaphors, and, and, and I loved that about it. It's like, we, you already know the shtick from the first one, so we don't have to play around with it. Yeah, our mom again. It, it's brilliant. Um, General Sweet Mayhem, the leader of the Duplo army, arrives in Apocalypseburg and announces that Queen Whatever Wanabi of the Sistar system <laughs> intends to wed Batman. <laughs> Mayhem's force is kidnap Batman, Lucy, Benny, Metalbeard, and Unikitty, taking them to the Sistar system. There, Batman is taken to Wanabi, where he eventually finds that the Queen helps satisfy his emotional validation and proposes marriage. The other are placed in the environments designed to tempt, are placed in environments designed to tempt them. The others each fall for these temptations, but Lucy refuses to accept hers, an endless attempt to brainwash her with catchy pop music. This song is gonna get stuck inside your head. I didn't remember that. I love this movie so much. Emmett converts his dream house to a spaceship to give pursuit. Ow. En route, he is saved from colliding with an asteroid field by the rugged adventurer Rex Danger Vest. As they continue onto the solar si- the Sistar. Sis- Sistar system, Emmett begins to take on several of Rex's mannerisms, hoping to impress Lucy. When they arrive, they evade capture by Wanabi's forces and join with Lucy. Rex helps them come up with a plan to rescue their friends, which involves switching off the pop music that is brainwashing the others. Well, Emmett will destroy the reception cake encased in a temple to stop the wedding. As Lucy fights Mayhem to get to the music, she learns that the Sistar system never meant to be antagonistic to Apocalypseburg, but instead they were trying to establish peace between them until we failed at communicating this well. Lucy tries to stop Emmett from destroying the temple, but Emmett, facilitated by Rex's manipulations, destroys the temple anyway. This creates a hole in the Lego universe where Wanabi warns them all of the Armageddon is upon them all. It's Armageddon and we'll be locked in, what is it, in the crate of storage. <laughs> um, in the real world, the act of destroying the temple is represented by Finn, the boy from the first movie, angrily destroying Bianco's, Bianca's Lego creations. Hearing them bicker, their mother gets furious and orders them to put the Legos into storage. The crate of storage. Um, the mom is Maya Rudolph, and she's hysterical. She steps on a Lego at one point and gives that, yep, that's more painful than childbirth, <laughs> which I thought was genius. Emmett tries to stop them, but is prevented by Rex, who reveals he is an embittered version of himself from the future. After being neglected for years after crashing underneath the dryer, he, he time traveled back with the intention to deliberately bring upon our Mamageddon his revenge. When Emmett fights back, Rex knocks him under the dryer to ensure they will um, that he will exist. Lucy rallies with the others into escaping from the storage bin and brings them back into the Lego world. Emmett and Lucy overpower Rex and destroy his time machine. Realizing that Emmett um, being saved by Lucy in their in their bout, sorry, in their battle, means he won't end up becoming him. Rex's timeline and therefore himself is erased. I know this sucks, by the way. In a wonderfully great. Um, I'm back to the I'm back to the futuring myself when he starts disappearing. When Navi and Batman finally wed, represented by Finn and Bianca reconciling with each other and agreeing to play together again, their mother returns their toys, averting our mom again. The Lego universe is transformed into a mishmash of Apocalypseburg and the Star Sistar system called Sistar uh, Sisto. Calypstar. Sister Calypstar. Which is peaceful. Emmett rebuilt his home with Lucy, who reveals she was the original artist of everything is awesome. Which I think is awesome. Nice. No pun intended. So um the cool thing that I found with the Lego movie too is that um where I said kind of when you get to about um the Lego Ninjago movie, whereas Lego Batman's kind of doing its own thing, Lego Ninjago deals with a lot of the same themes as the first Lego movie, like the kid dealing with his daddy issues. What I thought was great about this one is that where the first movie is about a parent realizing how to play again, which is Lego's whole thing, right, of bringing parents and kids together. Um, the Lego movie 2 is a much more focused thing, basically dealing with when boys go into adolescence, they get angry, Apocalypseburg, and they get very, you know, edgy, which is Rex Danger Vest, right? Like, that's the whole point. And um, the movie is, like, the whole message is anti-toxic masculinity. 
which is a very important thing right now. Jakey, does that make you upset? And um, so uh, I thought that was a really cool message to do for a sequel to a movie. What, what did you think, Sarah? I like it, and as a mother, I can I can see this happening with two kids, you know, wanting to play with each other. It's, it's already happening where Lee, yeah, Lee, Ava will share a toy with Jake, and then two seconds want it back. Right, exactly. Let go! I already have to separate them in the kitchen because all she wants to do is play with him when we're trying to eat and pull her chair closer to his high chair. It's pretty funny, but I've already done that. Don't make me separate you two! Yeah, no, no it, it, exactly. The, the mom walking into the room, like, I can just feel myself being like, oh, God. Uh, another thing I thought was great is that while they got Will Ferrell back to do the voice of President Business, he immediately exits scenes as soon as he shows up, which is hysterical, kind of making fun of the fact that they probably couldn't afford me. And the dad is never shown. He just talks out from the other room. And I loved the... Honey, where are my pants? <laughs> thing from the end that just cracked me up so much about the first one. So if you have kids that love the Lego movie and love Legos, and if you're a parent that also loves Legos, get out there and see the Lego movie too. Um, I we, liked it. I, I, I really dug it. I think I probably like it as much as I like the first one. It's not quite as good, but that's just because it's not fresh. But I, I love the hell out of it. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's Our not. Lego sets. Now we have a whole other movie worth of Lego sets. It's not because we also have some Lego Batman. Movies. It's not doing very well. So if you listen to this, get out there and Please see. Please go it. see it. See it six million times. Um, and I, I also loved how the Rex Danger vest it riffs on Chris Pratt as well, and all the characters he's played in his movies, yeah. where he builds a time machine that's based on all the famous movie time machines, but as Lego sets, which I thought was great, including um Doctor Who's time machine, which is awesome. The TARDIS. The TARDIS. But then he goes back in time to find the only people who will, uh, the only things in the universe that will understand him. And it's a bunch of velociraptors. Uh, and, and I thought that was fantastic. Um, so that's the Lego and the Lego movies. Um, again, we loved the Lego movie too. We hope you check it out and share it with your kids. Um, as always, post comments, topic ideas, and anything else to patreon.com slash the chipper or onto the YouTube page. And Sarah, as always... No shame in being a geek, no matter how old you are. Thank you very much, and talk to you all soon.